goes against your natural inclination because you have one single supreme creator that deserves all worship. So Allah sent prophets and messengers inviting people to that message and in, in, and according to, if we want to worship Allah in, according to His way, we have to follow His prophets and messengers. However, throughout the course of history, that message got top, corrupted because people started to over exaggerate pious people. So, in the case of Christianity, they've over praised Jesus uh, to the status of God or um, introducing Trinity, which obviously ag goes against your sound intellect. Um, and also, Hinduism, they introduce polytheism, multiplicity of gods. So, Allah. Allah sent prophets and um, Allah sent his final prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, with a final revelation, the Quran, to maintain and preserve that message, to worship Allah alone and do not worship any creative things. If you look at other world religious scriptures, they have mixtures of monotheistic passages, which already agrees with our intuition and reason, but they also mix with polytheism. So they worship in created things besides him. And this is where Islam says, do not do that. Only worship your one single creator, Allah, who deserves all worship. So what Islam does, Islam, um, Islam, um, combines the three components that gives you the completeness of the message. Islam comes in line with your intuition. You have one single creator that deserves to worship. Islam aligns with your sound intellect, which is no polytheism, no multiplicity of gods, no trinities. It is very clear to worship him alone. And then we have the authentic revelation, the glorious Quran, which is intact and preserved. That's it. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, as I was passing, yes. I read these three messages. Yes. And they seem to be identical. Mm. So, what I want from you, do you have any other pamphlet where I can see the three or four messages to show that fundamentally it is the same? Yes, so um, first of all, I don't think we have any leaflets for that, um, but you could take a leaflet about this Jesus in Islam, so you will find some passage of the Bible, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is, but what happened is, like I, like I mentioned to you before, we believe that Allah has sent prophets and messengers with revelations, so however, if you read the Bible, there are mixtures of monotheistic passages to worship God alone, but they introduce multiplicity of gods as well. Yeah. So it created confusion for the people. So now when Allah sent the final revelation, Allah made it crystal clear that you worship me alone. Yeah. I don't think I want to ask you. Yeah. This thing has been a sort of controversy in, in uh, in, in Islam. Uh -huh. The right of women. Mm. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, do men have a different right than men? Well, even from a biological and psychological standpoint, men and women are different. Men and women are built differently biologically and psychologically. So based upon Allah, Allah mentioned in the Quran um, that it is He who created us. So He knows what's good and bad for us. So Allah has, has um, given us rules and regulations. Um, in terms of the spirit and the value, both men and women are equal in the sight of Allah. But however, Allah has given different uh, roles for men and women. So the role of the man, the husband, is to work and provide. And the role of the woman is to bring up the children in the household. And what's happening now in this age of liberalism, um, now you see there's a chaos because men and women are working and now you see their children are not receiving you know good education because no one is educating them so islam comes with complete message complete guidance how to uh, how to how to marry how to bring up children, what's the role of the husband, what's the role of the wife, what's the rights and responsibilities of each other. So when we say women's rights, the reason why we have these leaflets is because many people have this misconception that women are being oppressed in Islam. And this is not the case. Um, in fact, if you look at the statistics, um, six out of 10 British white reverts are women. 60% of British, 60 of British um, reverts are women. 60 percent of? 60% of British reverts are women. So 6 out of 10 British are what? a woman, British woman. Oh, the, yeah. well, well, the population. Yes. The population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the overall, exactly. More or less, yeah. Yeah. seems that women yeah. are more in number. 
yes, but then they, yeah. you know, they live longer too. Yes, yes, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. They, they live longer, not yeah. because not because uh, of anything which is the merit, there, but uh, uh, they live longer. Yes, because they live longer. Yes, they yes. seem there to be more in number. Which logically, rationally, makes sense, of course. But yeah. if we go by the if we go by the media propaganda that women have been oppressed. As Islamophobia is rising, you should see that you should see that more people should leave Islam, or more, or more more women should leave Islam. But actually, Islam is growing in the West. Yeah, so, it, so yeah. But, but yeah. We see it that in Islam, that women. I don't know whether it is Islam that I mean, whether it is Muhammad that said that. But when you look around, you will see that women are being suppressed in the society. We are. Islam is, is the main religion everywhere. You believe so? Uh, what, what's your position regarding women in Islam? Do you well, believe that they've been oppressed? Okay. Uh, in the first place, you have in many places where women are not even educated. Ah, okay. Yes. This is a very good point I made. Look, this is culture. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that um Taliban in Faridatuna Ala Kuli Muslim. I'll translate you. He said every um it um seeking knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim man and female. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, he said whoever educates two daughters, um, they will be guaranteed paradise. So Islam actually came to give the woman the educational rights. So what you're going by is unfortunate is the culture. But if we go back to Islamic teachings, um, the Quran and the teaching of the Prophet emphasizes that women must have rights of education. Okay, so, yeah. so, yeah. so in, in Islam, there is no suppression of women not to go to school. No, not at all. We, we, have to, we encourage them to go to school. Okay. We encourage them to get educated. Yeah. So However, I see it, I see it in, uh, in some, yes. in some, even in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Women are educated. Yes, yes. Probably they're not allowed to drive cars, but uh, but that's that, that, that's like secular legislation. That's yeah. got nothing to do with Islam. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to judge, if you want to judge Islam, you go back to the primary sources, which is the Quran, the final revelation, the verbatim speech of Allah to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and then the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And you would find that women who accept Islam, if you do talk to them, they are liberated. Because you know, everyone is born to worship something. Yeah, they, they worship something higher. But British women, as they're starting to realize, I'm enslaved to the beauty standards of men. Men are the ones. Exactly. Yes. In the Western, in the Western world, yes. uh, the role has been exaggerated. Of course. Of course. See, uh, even today, uh, uh, we don't know who is a man and who is a woman. <laughs> exactly. See, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, I was. I was a friend. Some years ago, mm. and a man was talking about his husband. Mm. A man talking to somebody that I'm talking to you about my husband. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. How is it possible that myself, being a man, mm. is talking about my husband? Yeah, because a man can marry man, woman can marry woman, so everything is mixed. Everything is mixed, yeah. and this is why. This is why we need guidance. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This is why we need guidance from our Creator to tell us what's good and bad. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Even myself being a Christian, yes. I absolutely condemn that. Brilliant. Because, yes. because God created a man and a woman. Good. Yes. And of course, they have different functions. Yes, that of is course. In nature, that is how it is created. Yeah. God created a woman to have babies and not men. You see? Yes. So, trying to mix everything. Yeah. Man and woman. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be a man, I want to be a woman. How is yeah. it possible? Exactly. So I think we are. I think we are on the same foot. Uh, yes, I, I think. I think. In, yeah. In, in most, in yeah. most cases. Yeah. Uh, we are on the same. But what do you think about Jesus? Because uh, uh, you mentioned that you're a Christian. So from an Islamic yes. perspective, we believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. Peace be upon him. We believe that he's one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he's the Messiah. Yeah. We believe in his miraculous birth. Yeah. But we, but we as Muslims, we have a we have a moderate view. So the Jews, they rejected Jesus. They call him a false messiah, false prophet, which we completely condemn. But we also condemn the Christians by overpraising Jesus to the status of God. This is where like we, 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 we say that no, we come to the middle approach. Yeah.
Yes, of course, of course, no problem. So, what the Islamic stance is that look, we believe Jesus is no more than a messenger of Allah, and no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. So, we have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, okay, the only Son of God, mm -hmm. and uh, he was nobody has seen God, nobody has seen God before, yes, yes, but when Jesus came to the world. He came as a human being. Okay. So we saw him. Those who lived at that time, they saw him. They spoke with him. Mm. He did miracles. He yes. did that and that and that. So uh, can we say uh, we we give him the equal respect that we give to the father because the father we really see. And we know that Jesus Christ is representing the Father. So for that reason, uh, he's giving that one. Okay. Yeah. He's giving that one. Okay, so I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So um Allah gives a Allah um interacts with the Jews and the Christians a lot. In fact, one twelfth of the Quran is addressed to the Jews and Christians. Um so Allah addresses to the Christians to really ponder about Jesus Christ. Uh, Allah mentions in chapter 5 verse uh, verse 75 Allah says look at Jesus and his mother they both used to eat look how we made the signs clear to them so if we really ponder and unpack this passage Allah wants us to really ponder Jesus peace be upon him, because we know from our intuition uh, from our natural inclination and from our sound reason God is not dependent on food but when you see Jesus he's a human being like us he used to eat and drink so this does not defeat the majesty of Almighty God to de to defecate and go to the toilet, to go to the restroom. So Jesus is, is, is in needy. Uh, like I mentioned to you before, anything that is created is in needy of Allah, is in needy of that single Supreme Creator. So Jesus was in need of Allah. That's why he's not worthy to be worshipped. Well, um, I don't want to say. I does that, does that, that, but does that agree with your intuition? Your intuition tells you we have one single supreme creator we who deserves all worship. Yeah. We have, yes. in the Christian belief, that we have three gods in one trinity. I would say, first of all, I think you made a heresy because uh, a Christian is not allowed to say three gods. But do you know, do you know why you're saying this? Yeah. Okay, but not. Yeah. But uh, hang on, hang on. But do you agree with me? Um, what, what's the name, sir? You don't have to tell me your. Michael. Michael, right on. Nice to meet you, Michael. Yeah. So, do you agree that look, from our natural inclination, um, like instinctively, we have one supreme creator that, that who deserves all worship from us, right? He's given us so many blessings and favors, etc. So he's unlike his creation, right? And your sound reasoning would tell you that polytheism, multiplicity of gods, or trinity or triads, it violates against that intuitive knowledge. In our religion, we believe that to come to God, who is Almighty, that's what we say is Almighty. Yes, yes. You have to go to somebody. Ah, I see. I see. You have to go through somebody. It's sure. like if you are going to see the king, you don't just walk. See him. You go to this left and right. Like you, 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 go to, you go to his left and right. Who will then take you to the master? Mm. So Jesus Christ yeah. is like being the Son of God. Is there is the person we can talk to? Okay, can I just say that at that point? That's it. So you're talking about Jesus as the intermediary, like he's your middleman between the Father and yourself. So you call upon him, you pray to him. Okay, Allah says in the Quran, in chapter two, verse hundred eighty-six, Allah says that say to my uh, say to my worshippers that indeed I am near. I respond to the call of the caller. So respond to me and believe in me, so that you may be guided. So we don't need to go through prophets. We don't need to go through anything created because Allah is the one that is giving us with provision in the first place. So we don't need middleman. We don't need to call upon. Um, we don't need to call upon created things because even Jesus, peace be upon him, used to pray to the Father. So he's not worthy to be worshipped. How how can we address to Jesus when he himself used to call upon the Father for help? So this is why we as Muslims 
who say you don't need intermediary. If you want help, you alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. If you want to receive help from Allah, then seek help from Allah. You don't need in between. Now, if you say through Jesus, meaning you follow through the teachings of Jesus, the way how Jesus worshiped the Father, then I agree with you. Then I agree with you. If you mean that we worship Allah through the teachings of Jesus, I got a problem with that. Because this is why prophets and messengers came to teach us how to worship Allah. Because prophets, they were the best worshippers of God. Do you agree? So look at, I want you to really ponder this. Look, Jesus himself was in need of Allah. He's in need of that single supreme creator. So he's not worthy to be worshipped because he's needy of Allah. All we tell you Christians is that, look, love Jesus. To give the due rights of, but do not give the due rights of Allah to the rights of His creation. That's what we're saying. What happens is that just because of this fight now with Israel and uh, the Palestinians, it's very sad. It is very, very, very sad. Uh, if you go into the Bible, yes, we see that the Jews have been here all the time. You see. Uh, I, 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 I don't prefer to go down to the political uh, conversations. My job only is to convey the message of Islam. I'm not the best person to speak about politics. But what do you think of the message so far? That Islam teaches you submit your will to yes, one supreme creator yes, Allah deserves the way. Of course, of course. But what do you think about the message of Islam? That Jesus is a is, is a messenger of Allah, he's a prophet of Allah, and therefore in order for you to follow Jesus, you now have to follow the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Because because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came exactly the same message of Jesus to worship Allah alone, that one single supreme creator deserves all worship. Can I ask you one question? Yeah, sure, man. Jesus is alive what is Muhammad to you? Muhammad is the final prophet. He is the final messenger of Allah. No prophet will come after him. And we are, after we love Allah, we love the prophet more than ourselves and our parents. Why? Because if we obey the prophet, we're obeying Allah. We have to follow the Sunnah. We have to follow his path, his teachings of the Prophet. Because he's the best worshipper of Allah. So if we want to worship Allah the way how he wants, now we have to follow the last and final Prophet. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. If you were at the time of Jesus, you followed his teaching, then you followed exactly the way how Jesus worshipped Allah, then you're a Muslim. Now we're inviting you to accept the final revelation of the Quran. To accept the final Prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And he did not come with a new message. He did not come here to contradict the teachings of Jesus. He came only to confirm the message of Jesus. So if you want to be the true follower of Christ, now you have to follow Prophet Muhammad. Now what happened is if you examine the Bible, the Bible does have monotheistic passages. Shema Yisraelo, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, the hero of Israel, the Lord, that God, the Lord is one. And even Jesus says that in Mark chapter 12, verse 29, he echoes the same. But if you examine the Bible, it also created confusion because now they're telling you to worship gods other than the Supreme Creator. So it created confusion. So now Allah had to send his final prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to clarify that. When you open the Quran, every verse in the Quran revolves around singling out Allah in worship alone. There's no confusion in the matter. Are you, are you Imam? I'm not Imam. You haven't come to that stage yet. I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even in that position to call myself Imam. Yeah, what, what? yeah, yeah. My only job is to convey the message of Islam. That, look, Islam, look, there's three components that is required to have the complete message. Number one, your intuition. Your intuition tells you you have one single supreme creator who deserves all worship. Your sound intellect tells you no multiplicity of gods, no triads, no trinities, because that goes against your intuition and your reason. And then you have the authentic revelation of the Quran, which is preserved. It is not corrupted. It is only one Quran, unlike the previous scripture. So now I invite you to accept the final Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when you accept Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you are also accepting Jesus, peace be upon him. You don't abandon Jesus. No, no, no. Jesus is very important in my religion. Yeah. So do you agree that Jesus is a prophet of God, is a messenger of God? Yeah. If that is the case. Can I have this? 
of Quran? Yes, of course, of course. This is a Turkish shopping, so I'll give you the English one. Yeah, yeah. This English one? English one, yes. Okay, yes. so that I can see, because I know that so many things here are in the Bible. Absolutely, absolutely. And by, by the way, uh, from an Islamic perspective, the Quran is a Muhaymanin. Allah mentions chapter 5, verse 48, that the Quran is, is it has authority over the previous scriptures. So anything that is in line with the Bible, we've got no problem accepting it. Yes, many things I yeah, but anything, but anything that contradicts uh, the Bible, we don't accept it. But anything that is silent on the matter, we don't talk about it. So we Muslims have no problem to find passages of the Bible. You know, the greatest commandment, Shema Yisraelu, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Here is Israel, the Lord, the God, the Lord is one. But we do not accept passages of the Bible like, you know, Jesus, you know, you should call upon Jesus. This is where we say that Jesus never preached Trinity. He never preached to worship me. Rather, he always says to worship one God alone. And that's it. That's the message of Islam. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure speaking to you, Michael. I hope Allah guides you to truth. You're a pleasant individual. Any question that you have, we're here every Sunday. Okay, thank you very much. Islam, good brother. How are you doing? Good? Yes, yes, of course. He, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship and I gave him reasons why Jesus cannot be God that he himself is in need of Allah he himself used to be dependent on food and we know from our intuition and from our sound reasoning that Allah who is the single supreme creator of all who deserves all worship is not dependent upon anything he's not in need of anything so at least I plant some seed in him um, and you know just make dua um, just make dua for Michael you know to be guided to Islam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him to the truth I mean and as all Always, please make dua for all of the brothers and sisters in Palestine. Wallahi, I want to give a message to you, Palestinian brothers and sisters. You are giving the best da'wah. Wallahi, there are people that are accepting Islam just by looking at your video. SubhanAllah, we as here, we're comfortable. We're comfortable, you know, in Stratford Station, you know, we have security, but you are doing the best. You are the best that is. You are inviting people to, uh, to, to Islam. And so many people are inspired by your messages. So Wallahi, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon you and to help you and to destroy against the oppressors. Ameen. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.